Monica. Um, I use they and she pronouns. I am a junior business creative business of creative enterprises major with a minor in comedy writing and performance. Um, I'm Filipino, <laughs> and I also work for the Office of Intercultural Student Affairs. So doing double duty here. <laughs> Um, I'm Ari. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a sophomore BMA major, business studies minor. Um, I'm Filipino. I grew up in the Philippines. Um, yeah, so excited to talk to you. Go ahead. Oh, um, hi, I'm Haley. I use she, her pronouns. I am a first year BMA major. Um, I'm Filipino American. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Emily. I am at the Career Development Center with the Office of Director for International Student Career Services. I grew up in Boston. I was born in Malden. My parents immigrated in the late 60s. Um, been to the Philippines probably 20 times, especially in my, my early life, yeah, um, up to about my college years. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Um, always been a huge part of my life and part of the Filipino American community in the Boston area. Um, and I'm happy to be here today. I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> I'm Natita in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I guess the first question that I want to start with is what made you all say yes to this panel today? Um, I reached out to all of you kind of last minute, uh, <laughs> my fault, asking if you could speak on this panel. And I guess, like, what encouraged you to say yes and want to be on this panel? <laughs> I could <can> start. <laughs> Um, one, I love PPT. They're such a nice like little break for just like in the week. It's nice to just come and just be with community and talk about interesting stuff. Um, and I like talking about being Filipino as much as possible, <laughs> just because I personally have not seen it like represented or even like not even just represented, but honestly like talked about in the sphere of like Asian Americanness like in the country. Like I I feel like we're often very overlooked and like not honored or appreciated and it's not right so I think like I want to do my part wherever I can to just be very like loud and proud about it and be like we're here and we're here to like make a difference and our culture matters and like we bring a lot to you know the spaces that we occupy in this country so I you know any opportunity I have to talk about that I like to have to do that and I also like sharing my culture with other people like I come from a very densely Filipino area back in LA um and just like being so immersed in my culture a lot of times like it's pretty like it's, it's like sad sometimes here like how it's just so not like that um so i like sharing my culture wherever i can so that like people can partake in it with me um instead of just like isolating myself from it because there's like not a lot of people around and um yeah um definitely agree i grew up in the philippines so coming to boston was a huge like culture shift even though like i've been in the states for a while now um so recently just been feeling so homesick, it's getting cold and it's like, this is, I don't like the cold. I grew up on a tropical island, like, you know, um, and then obviously I like heard about it and like wanted to be loud and proud and wanted to talk about my culture and share it with everyone and just, you know, get a little piece of home. Yeah, I can echo, um, echo those sentiments as well. And I think one moment where I felt it really personally, the representation piece was when there was a student affairs staff meeting, um, a division meeting uh, two years ago when I just started, and one of our staff workers was um, leading that event, and it was about uh, Filipino American, the content was in including Filipino American identity, and I cried, I was like, this is the first time, I'm like, you know, Tisa. So, so it never <laughs> happened in my undergrad years to have an event for Philip, that was around Filipino American identity. And I, I went up to him at the end of the event, I said, I cried when I saw this event happen. And I was like, every time there's a possibility to create space or join space, I want to be there. Um, so I got asked to be on this yesterday <laughs> by Monica. <laughs> um, I was hesitant at first, but um, uh, because I like I knew about it last week. Um, and I was like, ah. and then she was just like, it's gonna be chill and just do it. I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> um, so then that's basically it. Um, I and I also think it's important to like have this community um, and like to educate others about like our culture. So, yeah. Oh, 
thank you so much for joining even in the last minute <laughs> it. but I also agree I'm like just so excited to see that we're like all eating the food and like just here together to like share more about your culture so thank you again for being here um so I guess like the first and uh, the second question I want to get into is like what is Filipino slash Filipino American identity and what does it mean for you to hold this identity? So um, as I've been saying, I grew up in the Philippines, but I was actually born in California. So I'm a dual citizen and I grew up in like international schools kind of my whole life. So I definitely understand that that kind of gray area of being Filipino American, but obviously back home, it was never really brought to my attention because everyone around me was Filipino, and she's like, oh, I'm Filipino, whatever. And then I came to the States um, and I was like, wow, I am not everyone here in the same <laughs> way. I was like, that is crazy. Um, and then back home, my family would always be like, oh, she's the American one, she's the American one. And then, um, and I'd be like, okay, so let me go to the States. I'll be the American one. I can prove it. I'm not. This is not. This is not. So it was kind of confusing and it is kind of like a weird gray area. And a lot of um, people who have that like mixed identity can definitely feel that. Um, yeah, so it is interesting, but it's it's a fun balance. You know, you, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. It's kind of kind of Montana. Right <laughs> Uh, for me, so I'm, my dad is white and my mom's Filipino, so I'm, like, very much, like, the mixed identity is very, like, heavily present in my, pretty much, like, every day, just kind of thinking about how to navigate the world in the split identity, particularly belonging to, like, the Asian American umbrella, where, like, I have never, I, like, growing up, didn't ever really see, like, Filipinos included in the Asian American umbrella, like, not that they don't, but just, I never really, like, saw it, so it was definitely kind of, like, hard to internalize as I grew up, especially coming to Emerson and it being, like, you know, with Asia, we have Asia because there's not enough people to start like branches based on like ethnic group, which is like, it kind of sucks. Um, it, I mean, it's really nice to like be together with everybody, obviously, and just kind of have like a pan Asian group where we can all like bond on that basis. And I think that's really lovely, but it does also like, you know, there's an aspect of, I understand my Filipino identity more through specifically being Filipino and not so much like a broader Asian identity, if that makes sense. Not to say that like I don't identify as being Asian and that like I think we're, you know, should separate ourselves or anything. Totally not that idea, but just I identify more closely specifically with the Filipino culture because of how I was raised. So I definitely like see it more through that. And also like my mom is American and my grandparents are from the Philippines. So there's definitely like, you know, root, like a removal of like, you know, the culture that I know is like, what uh, actually Isabel puts this really well and I'm quoting her words of like you know the Philippines that I know is like what what my grandparents knew when they left if that makes sense so like the culture that I see from there aside from like when I go out and see Filipino culture for myself like media and stuff like that like is very you know it's through their lens and then like it's through my mom which like my mom got it from their lens if that makes sense so not to say that it, that's a that's a metric of like how much Filipino you are if that makes sense because they're like that's not a thing but um, definitely just like the fusing of, um, you know, how I understand Filipino culture coming from, like, I'm not from there, neither is my mom. Like, it's from, like, generations removed and, like, understanding how that has all come to be here, I guess, if that makes sense. I'm, like, smoked off or swirling. I don't know where to start. <laughs> it's, like, a lifetime, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, what did it mean to me as a, as a, someone in elementary school, in high school, in college, now, you know, um, in, in elementary school, I remember playing out on the playground and there was like the junior high kids were in the cafeteria having their lunch cycle. And I was like playing on the stairs and I got this, uh, a piece of paper like held up to the window and it just said, what are you? Mm -hmm. And I lived in a predominantly um, Irish town. It was actually at the time the most Irish American town in the country. Wow. So I was like, you know, <laughs> Filipino there. Um, and then I was like, I didn't want to answer them. I just looked at them like, don't talk to strangers. But they kept putting this question, like the, the Japanese question mark, Chinese question mark. And I'd be like, 
nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. And they like went all this whole piece, this piece of paper had like a bazillion different countries. And then they wrote something that resembled Philippines. It didn't, it wasn't spelled right, I'm sure. Um, and I was like, I didn't want to answer at that point. I don't even know if I did. I'll just leave it at that like, for your own imagination. Um, but that made such a strong impression on me. Um, and then like growing up with just my mom, dad, and sister in this town, our closest friends in the town was the other Filipino family that was introduced by like the priest in the church and another <laughs> Filipino family we knew from where the hospital I was born to the nurse knew of another Filipino family in the hospital. So it's like, that's how we got together. These are our lifelong friends. And it's like, this is how our community reaches for each other. And I think that's in my genetics. I need to be with people of my own background because I feel more at home and there's nowhere, there's, it's a good thing. I love it, I love that. And um, so I guess what it means to me is that it means that I feel I, like I'm closer to home. You know? um, for me, I feel like it just gives me, sorry, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, It just gives me like more definition as a person. Um, like I am now tied to like an entire culture that has so much history. Um, not only in America, but also like in the Philippines. Um, and I think just like knowing that culture and being being able to share it, um, it just it's just like a small part that can be so much bigger in like new ways in my life. Um, that makes me feel Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing that. Um, I just like love to hear it sounds like there's just like a strong connection to like home and family within like the Filipino American identity and like it's so I'm happy that we can create spaces where like you know there's there's some sense of like home within it because that seems like it's such a like major part of the culture so I'm excited that we're here um so the next question is what does Filipino American History Month mean to you? I feel like we've kind of like touched on that in a way, but if there's anything else that you want to add to that in terms of like what that month being what it is, like is it what does that mean to you? So I think it's great to like have this little spotlight um, and to be recognized by our country uh, and then like an, an excuse to like tell more um, about my culture and you know. Um, but I also think it's important to remember that like acknowledgement is not advocacy um, mm -hmm. and there's still like a long way to go um, for all Asian Americans. Um, so it's like I said, it's like great to have that recognition, um, but it's it shouldn't like blindside the people to like the struggles that are still here. I like the positive side that highlights people I would never have known about because they've never been in my education so i like that when i open up you know whether it's like you know how google will have their little like, yeah. um, something i don't know if they've done anything for this one but um you know other things will come and populate my feed and i'm like oh i didn't know about that person on nasa i didn't know this for you know what i mean like like oh my gosh that's so cool or even someone you know a historical figure that i didn't know about mm -hmm. um so i feel like it's my opportunity to, to educate myself as well um, because I don't, you know, my day is just busy and I want to, I want to learn, but sometimes I'm just like, oh, I need someone to help me. Um, so this month, actually, something I'd like to do, it says it's an opportunity, um, something I'd like to do is try to find like local folks that we can kind of spotlight in our community so that we can get to know who's here, you know, even if it's in the Boston area. Right? Do you know Boston Latinos? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they have a podcast as well. We, I went to one of their events in freshman year because I'm Filipino bread. It was like in a church by the Emerson gym and we were like, oh, where are we right now? And there was a bunch of like families with kids and we were like, hi. Yeah, it's so good to find that, you know? And then like, I think that's the one that has spotlights too, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Instagram yeah. page, I'm mm -hmm. in one of them way, way back. But um, not that long, maybe two years ago. Um, but also like, we should really try to plan an event, you know, like have some have a speaker even. Mm -hmm. So ideas. I love that. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Um, Filipino American history. Um, I guess it is kind of really meaningful to me because I feel like I'm only recently Filipino American, if that makes sense, or like I only felt that or like activated that part of my identity when I came to college and when I came to the States. Um, so it's really nice to have that recognized, um, separate from just like me feeling like I'm Filipino when I'm back home in the Philippines, because that's not something obviously in the Philippines we don't celebrate Filipino American history month. So um, it's nice to have that kind of recognized. And um, I think it's really
really funny that all my non-Filipino friends are also very supportive. I know it's like October 1st, my friend Isha, she was just like, happy Ari month. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> it was just like, it was very nice to have um, yeah, my non-Filipino like, friends just acknowledge that as well. Yeah, I feel like it's just so cool to like think about people that came before us, like, like, uh, what's it called? You like Filipino Youth Conference, I think is like, they are what established Filipino American History Month, like to the government, like, actually, it's the 50th anniversary of like, Filipino American History Month, if you guys didn't know, which is like, crazy, like, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's just so cool, like, how like our people have like, made themselves known and like stake their claim in this country like honestly like people don't even know Filipinos are the second largest group of Asian Americans in the country and like I feel like literally nobody knows that um so it's just so cool like you know sometimes when you feel a little like lonely and just being like I don't know I feel like my culture is not represented or talked about enough and then just having this whole month specifically because of like the people that came before us that like fought and you know I think they're still alive too it's yeah. not like it was like a million years ago but like the people that came before us like who also believed in this and who also believed in like you know our voice matters and like our community and our visibility matters like I find that like super comforting and just super like I feel very close to like my culture you know because of that thank you thank you so much um okay so the next question that we have is what are some values that you cherish that you have learned from your identity and from being in the community and how do we share that with others? Um, okay, so because I, my parents were the ones who immigrated and we grew up in Boston, the closest airport, Logan Airport, is like second home to me. Oh my gosh, so the value is hospitality. So when they moved here, like their strongest connections were all in Philippines. So when we moved here, like people would come to visit and stay with us and they go back and they have their own version of network in the Philippines, mm -hmm. like everybody basically, <laughs> um, you know, when you get the word would get out there, when you go to Boston, you call up the Barga family and stay with them. Mm -hmm. So basically we had people in and out of our house my whole life. And I went back and forth to Logan, you know, as a kid being, the, you know, in the backseat or whatever. I'm welcoming people. I have no idea who they were. I had to kiss them. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so like even up until my college years, the place that I went during the free period was like three days. I would bring my home to Logan to stay. Because I was like, I don't know what it's like to not go there, you know, for this stretch of time. Um, and then it actually has influenced my career path because working with international students, I'm still welcoming people. And so like that value is like, part of my career and, and what gives me joy. Mm -hmm. So it has everything to do with being Filipino and that's the hospitality. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh. Um, I think the, the the one that sticks out to me the most after like being here is not like being kind of stubborn about not letting go of who you are as Filipino. Um, because I would call my grandparents back home or call my dad back home. Um, and I would talk about everything I'm doing here and he would always just say like, don't forget that you're Filipino, like don't forget where you came from and that, like that was just something that was really like ingrained in me after coming here because it's not something I ever thought about back home, that like everyone is Filipino. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really important and not letting go of that. <laughs> <laughs> To me, like, I've also just been like recently doing a lot of research kind of like in our history, like coming from a people that have been so deeply and violently colonized, like staying true to like keeping what what like semblance of culture we have to this day, I think is so important because so many people have tried to fuck that up, like, especially and it's also hard because like America tried to fuck that up. So the kind of reckoning with that identity is so just really weird, like something I haven't really thought about until like I came to college and I was like, that's so like strange and like particularly me because um I'm a queer person I identify as a lesbian um like I like looked into like old research and kind of like values pre-Christianity and Catholicism because of course that was brought over by colonization like there were no like there was no bad stuff about homosexuality and there was no bad stuff about like gender identity like there were even like deities that had partners of all sexes and like they didn't even have genders and stuff like that and like that like brought me to tears where I was like, oh my God, like 
I have something I've been like super afraid of and particularly like, you know, in bringing that to my family. Um, I realized like the people that came way, way before me, like they didn't give a fuck, like, and they lived proudly in their own identity. Then it was like, you know, shitty Spaniard people that fucked that up. So like learning that, like I felt so, so connected to that, to being like, yes, this, like that really like motivated me to be like, I need to keep recentering this culture that like my people fought for to maintain throughout all this bullshit that they went through like throughout history so like I that definitely like connected me so deeply and just like kind of in the weaving of my identities was I, I was like yes I belong here in all of my identities like this is who I am and like I cannot like I can't lose it thank you so much for sharing that that's like wow just thinking about that like you know it's like what did what are the values of my culture like pre-colonization mm -hmm. and like holding on to that that's definitely like so important and I think not done enough so thank you for sharing that also I want to add that um that new values can be created by the plant mm -hmm. and that's what you're bringing and I feel like oh my gosh I really need to dwell in that space for a while because it's neglected mm -hmm. because I'm so like you know go like go with the flow all the time mm -hmm. and I think that that's what the Philippines did it adopted you know Spanish culture adopted American culture I'm like wait can we like close the door for a bit and like look yeah, inside yeah. and get back to before then? Mm -hmm. um, a really good friend of mine, and like you know, our names are also very structured as far as like the Mar a lot of us have Maria Maria as a prefix kind of name, <laughs> and so I'm Maria Emolita, and a good childhood friend, the one that was in the Irish family. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Marie Jennifer Matias. It's very um, Spanish sounding, mm -hmm. and she had a, a conversation with her mom about it, and I'm like, and she had this. She told recounted this to me. Um, she was like my name doesn't tell me anything about where mm -hmm. I'm from. Mm -hmm. And so her mom actually gave her a new name. Wow. So it was, that never happens with the mom actually giving the name. Mm -hmm. We usually pick our own kind of thing. We want to change it. Um, but she chose a name of a Philippine goddess. Wow. And I was like, that is awesome. I want to look at those names now. And mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, folklore is coming more into my consciousness because I haven't mm -hmm. even looked at it before. Mm -hmm. Who's there to tell me? She's like, go for it. Yeah. So like, I want the new values to come through mm -hmm. the younger generations to sort of wake me up to them. So I'm like looking for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have that much to add. Um, for, uh, for me, it's mostly just like family values. Mm -hmm. um, and even like, and of course, with the Philippine American community, like you don't have to be related to these families. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can make a community anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. I'm from South Carolina, so I'm very far from home. Um, so I think communities here, like this, like South Africa, because they are Asia, um, they give me a sense of like community. So I just want to like echo some of the things that you all said, like some of the values I'm hearing is like hospitality, not letting go of who you are, staying true to yourself, and also just that like idea that new values can be created within the current generation and we can continue to uplift those and just like family and having finding that sense of community everywhere you are. So thank you for sharing. Um, I guess the next question we have is in the context of the world and here at Emerson to uplift Asian and Asian American identifying people, especially considering that Emerson's a predominantly white campus um, and against the backdrop of the rise in Asian hate crimes and targeting, how do you continue to celebrate who you are? For me personally, it's just like not not shut it up. <laughs> just like, you know, just like not everything you say about your culture has to be some sort of like activist movement. Like you don't have to be the next whatever and you don't have to like make a commentary for like your identity to be valid, which I think is something I've really been thinking about recently because like, you know, especially like being in leadership, like I was in like Asia, like co-exec all of last year and just feeling like I was being treated like a spokesperson for all things Asian, which to one, I was like, I'm mixed, so I don't think I like should be the proper authority to speak on, you know, no, I don't think anybody is the proper authority to speak on everything about a culture, but just being like, you know, it's exhausting enough to be reminded of all the like shit that goes down with people like us in the country that like, you know, we shouldn't have to be expected or like, I hope that people like know that like we shouldn't like, you don't need to be like a spokesperson, you don't need to be an activist to be like in your identity, like 
no one asks, like no one should ask that of you. And that doesn't make you more or less of your identity because that's really hard. Like people don't realize like this, particularly like our white peers I've seen, like they don't realize how hard that is. Like the double workload of it to like feel it and then like speak and try to like intellectualize it so that you sound like whatever blah 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 it's like you know you don't have to be a professor on your own identity it's your identity and like whatever like it shouldn't like be challenged and that shouldn't be measured by like what you post on Instagram or like what you say in your class to be like oh yeah then you're the best Asian it's like okay I not not that I think that like people haven't like said that but I definitely feel that like I don't know if other people have but like I definitely felt that and it's just like I don't know I hope that those like external pressures of needing to be like at the forefront of every issue re like mm -hmm. re like um regarding that's what I'm looking for <laughs> regarding like that shit that happens is like really really tough and I hope that we can kind of like decenter that because that's so exhausting and like people haven't really realized how exhausting that can be even just like seeing on the timeline and being reminded of it like whenever mm -hmm. whenever yeah, to like add on to that, I feel like there is like an interesting balance that I've been like trying to figure out between like being Filipino is so like central in my identity and like so, so important to me. But when I enter spaces that are like predominantly white and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm from the Philippines. And everyone's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like that is the coolest thing about you. <laughs> I don't care about anything else you have to say. You're not from here. That's cool. That's cool. And like, yes, it is very cool. And like, I'm very proud of it and I will never shut up about it, but it's at the same time, it's like being seen as just that. And like, that also goes back to like speaking, like having to intellectualize when shit happens, like um, is kind of difficult. So like trying to find a good balance in that or like from like your white peers or from your other non filipino peers is really nice. Um, like my friends, I was like, guys, can we do a Filipino movie night? Because I found out that all my favorite Filipino movies are on Netflix oh. in America. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, for sure. Like, let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm like, okay, I'm forcing you all to like watch this film. <laughs> like, I'm forcing you. Um, so it's nice to find that support where like my identity can be appreciated or my culture can be appreciated without it being like, oh, you are this exotic creature that I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Um. The question. Yes. Like in a time like this, where the world is as it is. <laughs> you know, I like. Oh, I'm thinking about a few things that Monica said about like not always, and you know, echoing. I'm not always intellectualizing. Like, I'm going to rewind to an event that I participated in. Like, two years ago, and it's what matters to me why I do is on the call, and some folks here know about that event that happened a couple years prior. But um, one, the, our, the first speaker was talking about anger, and I know that I, like, they channel their anger to, like, use it in how they engage with the community um, to make things better. And I was like, I think the anger is being by me. So I don't feel anger very often. I get excited, I get passionate, I love a lot of the things I'm doing. I dislike strong or even hate some things that happen in the world, a lot of things that happen in the world. But the emotion of anger, I don't know what that is, what that looks like to me. And I know that um, in the world of activism, I feel like anger is worth fighting. So what do I do when I don't really experience anger the way I see it in other people, but I want to do something? How do I use the energy I have? So like, I don't really know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm like, I don't have that temperament. I don't have some things that I feel like are needed or that I see in other Filipino Americans in my sort of generation that are very activist connected uh, with their communities. And I'm like, man, I feel kind of bad, you know, mm -hmm. like, am I not doing enough, you know? Um, so that's something that I, I don't know if that's part of this sort of celebration, but I want to be able to like own my own identity mm -hmm. and how I express myself and not be ashamed. And I think that's one of the that, uh, that I still think about. Thank you. Um, I guess to echo everyone because everyone's making such good points. I think it's um, like I really resonate with Monica because we were talking about this in Asia. It's like, do not stop talking about who you are. And like, I will never, like, I have to tell myself to stop feeling bad for like talking about the Philippines too much. But like, why should I care? That is who, that is part of who I am. Um, and I think like, 
regardless of like what's going on, I think there's no like one identity that you can have. Like your identity is who you make it to be. Like it's your own journey. And I think like discovering that is such like a process. And it's good to like have your friends around you to like express like how you're discovering your identity. Um, and I think it just all goes into like being you. Yeah. <laughs> um, if any of that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so um, I guess in light with what you said of like how we're a PWI and I think it's just not stopping about like what you're passionate about. Um, like a reason why I'm here like at Emerson is to like because I'm a VMA major and there is such a misrepresentation in media. Um, and that's like my main passion like here to change that because there is so much misrepresentation and like lack of representation, um, both on screen, on stage, behind stage, uh, behind the camera, like everywhere. So that's like, whatever your passion and your identity, whatever that is, it's just like, be confident in it. And like I said, <laughs> like don't stop talking about it, never shut up. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like a common like thing I'm hearing from this is like, you know, it's like we should be proud of like who we are and all of our different identities. And like you guys are channeling that through like being proud of who you are as like Filipino or Filipino American and like holding that with you everywhere you go. And like there's no need to feel shame around that because at the end of the day, like it's you and like that's just like who you are and like you should be able to walk around and be proud of that so i'm really happy that you were able to be here and talk about it more um those are the questions that we sort of like had and we're kind of nearing on one soon so i just want to ask the panelists if there's anything else you guys want to like highlight or bring up before we sort of close the discussion i just know that uh, the uh, cultural organization in the Boston area. It was founded in like, 1976 and it's the oldest one in the country. Okay. Um, and it's something, um, an organization that is part of the Peace Front Line. Um, and Kathy and my sister spent to work with like the founding children. And all the, par the children of the founding parents are now like the children of as well. Um, so if anyone wants to connect to it or like connect with them for an event or something like that, you know, come talk to me and I'm happy to you know, make those connections. But it would be fun to just take it and see the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they started like preschool all the way up. Oh, if you want to share that with me after, yeah. I can make sure to like get that on my Instagram too. And I know Isabel also had something that you wanted to share with us. Yeah, so um, I work with Boston's Asian American Film Festival. Mm -hmm. um, and this Friday is Filipino Friday. So um, there's a $24 film pass um, and you get to watch all of Friday's films, which um, to speak, I guess, like obviously that's not true, but like um, to speak to your um, dilemma with Filipino representation. The films are made by and star Filipino people. So that's super exciting. And this is the fun part. I got to zoom in and read it. Order Filipino Friday dinner boxes from Jules Kitchen and Fitz and Bites by Christine. Available for pickup Friday, October 22nd. Last day to order is today, Tuesday, October 19th. So if you want to order food, um, you can also do that. Um, but yeah, what are the films? Uh, I'm going to share this on the Instagram. Yeah, so there's one documentary and then two narrative films. Um, it's, yeah, if you want to take a look or if you want to talk to me more about getting involved with BAP, um, it's a really great organization. Um, I have a ton of fun. Um, and also like food. <laughs> if you like the food here, you're going to like the food that we can order from there. So. Another so, thing, sorry, yes. oh, I can please. share a lot. Yeah. I'm currently also in a master's program on publishing and writing, Ooh. and I have to do a project, and I'm going to do um, my part classic poetry, and this is by a Filipina author, um, Barbara Jane Reyes. There's a Philippine poetry night tomorrow night, um, and it, it's in California, so I think it takes place at 8 o'clock our time, um, or but I can send that information. Oh, yes. Um, so 
last year when there was the graffiti incident that was anti anti Asian, um, and we had an event up there. Um, we created a book for folks to write messages to the Asian American community for now and for the future. Um, so right now it's in the Career Development Center and we're trying to circulate it there for now and then maybe send it to other offices in, in Melbourne and then bring it over here to Intercultural. So um, if folks want to sign that, we'll be, we can share when that's closer because it'll be already closed. Um, I love that. Yeah, I definitely want to share that. And especially in the fall. So and it's called Loving Graffiti. Um, because it was actually graffiti that was um, very offensive, but this is um, you can see some of the um, Yeah, so I'm gonna make sure to get all of that out, all of that. So thank you all for sharing all that. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I think that we are five minutes to one, so I want to make sure everyone gets where they have to go. <laughs> So I just want to again say thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you to the people on Zoom for being here. And I hope we can continue to create these spaces where we can like share community. Mm -hmm.